Do you have a rondo in your backyard? Did the Lakeside River Park Conservancy remove it for you? Is it starting to re-sprout? Would you like to learn how to control it? Well, this handy video will show you how to do that. Let's talk about the tools you're going to use on this project. Um, for most cases, you're going to use these heavy-duty pruners. Two handles, boom. For the more difficult spots, you're going to use this pruning saw. Um, easily found in all the stores, hardware stores, Home Depot, easy to use. We'll demonstrate these for you in just a minute. Okay, so what we're going to do here now is I'm going to show you how we mix the chemicals. We're going to be using the chemical grade that you can buy at the store. Um, we're going to use glyphosate, we're going to have a, a bottle, a, a, a spray contain, canister, and we're going to have water. That is all you need to mix these chemicals. We have our PPE and our safety goggles and long sleeves to protect us from any splashing. And like I said before, closed toed shoes is always good. We're going to take the lid off of this and we're going to measure out very carefully six ounces of chemical. Following the manufacturer's label instructions, I've just measured six ounces of chemical into this and I'm going to pour it into the sprayer first. It's going to go right into the spray sprayer. And now I'm going to take one gallon of pre-measured water. One gallon of water. It's just plain water out of the tap. And I'm going to add that to that six ounces of chemical. Put the lid back on the glyphosate. We put our sprayer lid onto our sprayer. Fasten that in place. And we are ready to go. Those are mixed chemicals. So this is the method we're going to use for cut stump. We're going to use a 100% glyphosate mixture, like again, like the labeling says. We're going to take our glyphosate, our Roundup. We're going to very carefully measure out an amount that we think we're going to use today. About that much is going to do it. I'm using about three or four ounces. What I've done is I've put it in a container that I can safely attach a lid to and access again later. So I can attach the lid to this, and then when I'm out in the field, I'm just going to take this lid off and use my foam brush to reach down and do a paint job on top of the Arundel. So Lamont is about to demonstrate that cut stump method for you, and he's going to cut the Arundo two different ways, with the loppers and with the saw. But what I wanted to note right now is that you want to cut these stumps about four inches off the ground. And a good rule of thumb is your hand. If you take your hand and you grip it at the base, that's going to be approximately four inches. Remember two things. When you're cutting, you want it to be, you want it to be safe, and you want it to be flat. You don't want to have a 45 degree angle or any kind of sharp angle sticking up. You want this to be perpendicular with the ground so it creates a flat surface to avoid any accidents. If you stumble, trip, fall, it's less likely to impale you. So you'll notice now he's taking the 100% glyphosate and he's applying it to the tops of each one of those cut stumps quickly as soon as possible after cutting. He's careful enough to spill it on himself or get it on his clothes. He's got his proper PPE on and now he's going to go ahead and set that aside safely covering it and that's it. That's cut stump application on a rundown. Let's talk a little bit about castor bean. In some cases, you may not want to use the chemicals on the castor bean because it's such an easy plant to just reach down and pull out. This is a great example of that castor bean that I was talking about that you can easily pull. Um, here's what you're going to do. This is a great height for it. You're just going to gently reach down here, grab it firmly by the base, and gently pull, and it should just easily extract. Very little pressure. I have another baby one right here I'm going to demonstrate one more time. Firmly by the base, gently pull. It's coming right out of the ground. I know it looks like a really long root, but it generally tends to be very loose. Even these larger ones here, 
This might take a two-handed pull. I haven't practiced this, so we'll do this together. Very simple, very easy. One simple pull, I did not strain at all. If these had berries on them, what you would wanna do is cut the berries off and put them in a bag and bag them separately because each one of those berries carries about 7,000 seeds in it. So again, very down here at the base, very firmly, slowly, gently pull it out, comes right out, minimal amount of effort. You wanna make sure that you haul those off your site if at all possible. Here's another great example of that castor bean. This castor bean is far too big for you to be able to reach down and just pull right out of the ground. So we're gonna demonstrate now the cut stump method where you're gonna cut it, the tree's gonna fall out of your way and you're gonna paint the 100% glyphosate directly on the plant. So now we're gonna show you the same method on the castor bean plant. Lamont's cutting, very easily cut plant again. He's gonna safely remove that, checking his fall zone, make it fall away from him, people and other things. And now just like on the Arundo, he's gonna grab his brush and his glyphosate, and he's gonna come over and paint the top of that stump. As simple as that. And that is castor bean application cut stump. A little quick instruction on this, proper disposal of your brush. Lamont's gonna take the brush and he's gonna place it in the very bottom of a brown paper bag, or you can roll it in newspaper. Once it's in the very bottom of that, he's gonna close everything up, fold up the bag, and then roll it up, just like this and he can safely throw it in the trash now. No cross-contamination, and you don't have to worry about anything. So this is a great example of a height that's great for spray application. You're gonna mix your chemicals like we previously showed you according to your manufacturer's instructions. You're gonna make sure there's no native vegetation that you want to protect that's around the area that you're spraying and then you're going to carefully apply the herbicide to the plants. Lamont is gonna demonstrate that for you now. He's carefully, go ahead and apply. He's carefully applying the, the, cast, the herbicide to the castor bean leaves, and then he's gonna step over and start applying it to the, there we go, he's gotten all the leaves, that's gonna die and it's gonna kill the root. Now he's gonna start treating the arundo from top to bottom, painting it like you would a wall. Just trying to get all of those, as much of those leaves covered, as much permanent coverage. There we go. Now we're using a blue marker dye, so you won't be able to see this as easily. Just make sure that you make the entire plant wet. And that is how you apply spray herbicide. So we've effectively demonstrated how to apply herbicide to castor bean and arundo, both in the cut stump and 2% formulation. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below or email us directly at our website, lakesideriverpark.org. Thanks for watching.